I've had the opportunity to have the Vasa ergometer since 2005, and I've used it as both a coach and an athlete. And one of the things I've learned in that time, as I've introduced many athletes to this tool for the first time, is that it's really important to learn some basic skills, to approach it in the right way, to think about how you're going to progress from that point onward, always focusing back on some key skills. So when you first approach the ERG, take note of where the door setting is. At this point, it's actually at a door setting of five. You've got basically seven different resistance levels on the ergometer. It's really important to make sure that you start out at a very low resistance level so that you can really focus on learning good skills and good techniques. So I'm going to go ahead and press that door right down so it's at a setting of one. And that's really where you want to start. So I'm going to ask Carlin to step up to the ergometer. Go ahead and put your hands in the paddles. It's really important when you're putting your hands into the paddles to reach all the way in, pull the tubing down nice and tight. Remember, you want to feel nice pressure through the heel of your hand taking advantage of the power of the Y. Once you've got your hands in the paddles and they're feeling secure, you can go ahead and step back onto the bench. It's important when you're getting onto the bench for the first time, it feels a little awkward at first. Get yourself in a comfortable position. Relax your legs straight out, keep your head in line with your spine. If you need to slide up or slide down, you know, that's okay, but feel a nice stable position. The next thing we're gonna do is really look at two key focus points. Uh, which I think are really important. The first is to stretch one arm at a time right toward the pulley. Fingers are pointed straight ahead, palms are down. We want to stretch out through the upper back muscles and really feel a nice, long, extended, and streamlined arm. Once you're in this position, the next one is where she's going to bend her elbow, pop that elbow up nice and high. And it's important to remember that this motion is not a forceful one. She's really just raising the elbow up and popping it up. And you've got to remember in the water, it's the same thing. Very often swimmers will press down, often with a straight arm, or create a forceful movement here, and this isn't forceful at all. So once she pops that elbow up, she'll come back out, again, one arm at a time, and repeat that a few times. So stretch, catch, and then she moves right into the pull phase, and she can either recover under the water or swing out wide to the side. Once you've practiced this a number of times with one arm, you can then bring the other arm in and alternate in sort of what is a catch-up stroke kind of fashion. I think it's ideal, Carlin, if you could just leave that one arm extended. So now she's working the left arm, she's got that right arm extended, and when she feels ready, she can then go ahead and alternate right arm and left arm. One other thing I want to mention here is breathing, because this is something that I often find as a coach when I see swimmers in the water, they're not relaxed, they're not exhaling fully. So when you're on the ergometer, especially at low intensity levels, breathe normally and make sure to focus on the exhale. As you repeat these skills over and over again, what can and often happens is, as she bends this elbow, the elbow will drop. So be really, really careful. One of the wonderful things about the ergometer is it allows you to focus on one skill at a time really watch what you're doing and really pay attention to make sure that every stroke you take is perfect. Because remember, you're laying down neural engrams, you're greasing the groove, you're really building in basic fundamental stroke techniques that will carry you through your training and allow you to progress. So she's getting into a nice swimming rhythm now. Here she looks really relaxed, she's breathing normally, and every stroke she's taking is just the way it should be. Remember, each time you come back to the ergometer, start slow. Be conscious of what you're doing. Engage your mind in the process of learning these key skills. When you do that, it begins to become a normal way that your body moves. When you go to the pool, take the same kind of approach. If you can do that and continue to repeat these steps over and over again in increasingly better and more fluid swimming rhythms, then you're just going to do great on the ergometer and continue to progress at the ways in which you're hoping.